C720, Operations and Supply Chain Management. We really need to talk about this one. Stay tuned. Dear me, three to six months. Watch how I make you proud. Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Xavier. This is Tech Xavier, where I share my journey in tech, both on the career side and on the education and learning side. I am a recent graduate from WGU. I got my bachelor's of science in IT management. And with the help of my enrollment counselor, my program mentor, and just my desire to be done with school, I was actually able to accelerate and finish in about three and a half months. So I started on November 1st with my first course and finished my final course on February 16th of 2023. In today's video, we're going to talk about one of the most challenging courses for me. And actually this course was the basis for number one, this whole series and number two, just my own study method as I was going through the rest of my coursework. And that course is operations and supply chain management. We're going to talk about the requirements. We're going to talk about the resources. We're going to talk about what the heck is operations supply chain management and also how it's relevant. And most importantly, how do you pass the objective assessment? Let's go ahead and dive into it. So what is operations and supply chain management? It's basically the activities you do to keep the fulfillment of services or the distribution of goods flowing. So it's everything from where do you put things in a warehouse? How close are your suppliers to you? How quickly are your tools next to various workstations? All these different things help the flow of work and keep things relatively smooth. You also look at things like bottlenecks and constraints and things that create a lot of downtime and prevent you from meeting your customers' needs. Now, how does this relate to IT management? Uh, several different ways. So anytime you've seen any kind of project development team or DevOps, they're operating along the same lines as like operations supply chain management. They're doing what they can to get things kicked out as quickly as possible. Now, in addition to that component, there's also things like asset management. So if you've ever worked in an infrastructure environment, people need hardware. They need laptops, computers, monitors, replacement keyboards, Bluetooth headsets. They need video cameras and speakers and ergonomic mice or mouses and ergonomic keyboards. They need all these different things that likely your IT team will provide. And how does that get to them quickly? How do you make sure you have enough inventory? How do you make sure you don't overspend? Because there's this thing in IT called planned obsolescence with, <laughs> with products. So things don't always last the way they were intended. So how do you manage all that stuff? Having an understanding of operations and supply chain management is a great first start so that you can come up with a plan and really make sure that you're protecting the budget. So that said, let's look at the course more in depth. Let's go ahead and look at what it has to offer. So here we are at the course homepage. And if you're not sure that you're at the course homepage, it's located right here. Now, before we get into all this great stuff, this is a three unit course and the only required activity you have to do is pass the objective assessment. Now that seems simple enough, but this is, this is the type of course that'll make a grown man cry. <laughs> and it's definitely something to take your time with. So let's just look at the overview and then we're going to dive right into the materials and then talk about the plan to pass. So firstly, you have the course start date. You have course materials, you have assessments, you have notes, you have instructor information here, announcements, course tips, course search, and course chatter. But course announcements and course tips, this is where you may find the materials. Well, not the textbook material, but the resource page for this course. You can also download the course as a PDF, and then you can also request or submit feedback about the course if you have any suggestions to make the process or make the page or any component of the course better. Now let's go ahead and look at the course resource page first, as well as the materials. So we're going to go ahead and left click on that. And here we are. This is the pop-up for or the pop-up before the resource page. So 
let's go ahead and click on the C720 course resources page. It should open in a new window. And here we are. So let me zoom out a little bit just so you can see this a little more clearly. So you have a welcome message here and just some other pieces of information. We're going to look more in depth in this as we do the plan for study for passing. But I just want to show you that this is the resource you're really going to need. And so I strongly, strongly suggest that you bookmark this page uh, while you're taking the course, just so you can get back to it quickly. This area right here, these topics to know are going to be your friend. But again, we'll talk about that in a second. Now, next thing is the course material. So we're going to just scroll down on this page, click next, and then we're going to launch course and it should bring us to the textbook homepage. So this is the textbook table of contents page. And as you can see, this uh, book or material is comprised of eight units. And so there's a lot of information. You have management and planning, quality management, supply chain, just quite a few different topics to dive into, but it's all here on the course materials page. And again, we'll come back to explore this as we do our objective assessment study plan. Now, one thing that I want to make really clear with this process is that you're going to need a lot of patience with yourself and you're going to definitely need to go through the materials in a way that helps you retain as much of the core concepts as possible. Now that said, I also think it's good for you to apply a little pressure to yourself and just go ahead and schedule the objective assessment. Now uh, you can always reschedule any time, but I generally like to schedule these exams no more than two weeks uh, out from the day that I start the course. So definitely do that first before you do any of the other steps that I lay out here, get that scheduled, make that commitment, and then let's go into the study plan. Okay, so the first step in the study method or study plan is to just review the course planning tool. So when you click into your homepage, you should see this option. Go ahead and take it just so that you can see more or less what the questions are going to be like. There's only five or six questions, I believe, that come with this planning tool. So as you go through each question, they're going to ask you essentially how familiar you are with the content. So you can say either I've never seen this a day in my life. <laughs> you could say that I'm somewhat familiar with it. And you can also indicate that I'm very familiar with it. This, this is not part of your grade, but the more honest you can be about how comfortable you are, the more you can determine where you need to focus your attention. Now, at the end of the course planning tool, you'll also get a report and that report will break down what it is that you need to review or what areas will come up later that you're going to need to really focus on. Once you finish the course planning tool, we're going to hop right on over to the pre-assessment and the pre-assessment is 70 questions or it could be more. They give you almost three hours to take the, the, uh, the pre-assessment and you can start this right away. Now, mind you, we're starting this before we've done any reading. So if you bomb it, it's okay. But you want to see number one, where you feel comfortable at, like what things you can deduce and then where you really need to focus your attention in terms of like focus study. There's a lot of content again on this particular course. So we want to be as strategic as possible. And in saying that when you do your pre-assessment report, you can see what areas you did well in, what areas you didn't do well in and just go from there. Now I didn't really approach this course the, the best way. And so I thought I could just remember my way through passing the exam. And this was actually the first and only course that the exam I didn't pass on the first try. And it humbled me quite a bit. As you can see, these are all the different times I've taken it. I actually took it before I, I legitimately started the course, which was interesting. I don't know how I got access to it, but you tinker around enough, you might be able to find some things. But as we look at this, you're going to see all the different areas that, you know, I did okay in. And this was again, without any context. So I felt like I would do really well, but the objective assessment felt completely different from the pre-assessment, but nonetheless, you can see the areas that are weighted. So operational strategies, supply chain, and then quality management. These are the areas that require or take up the majority of the exam and then followed by 
the operating efficiency, and then forecasting, planning, and scheduling. You can see your score here, and just as a breakdown for these colors, when you see those colors, what, what you're seeing is either you fall under exemplary, competent, approaching competence, and unsatisfactory. Now, the next step in terms of preparing for the objective assessment is priming. And what I like to do is I like to go to the course materials and use the table of contents to help me with this step. So as we're letting the page load, we're going to go ahead and scroll down. You can see that there are a couple of different units. Unit one is more about how to approach the course. So it's not really something you have to study, although you can. It's not every little bit helps <laughs> with this class, but you can see the different units here. And we'll use unit two as my approach. So generally, this should be all collapsed. And when you see that, you're going to focus first on the unit title. So in this case, it's management and planning. You can try to think about, okay, what does that have to do with operations supply chain? What kind of concepts are going to come out of this? And just ask yourself some questions. Now, I like to prime my brain because I just don't like to read through a bunch of text. I get a little fatigued and it's like, I don't even remember anything. But in priming, I'm asking myself various levels of questions. If you want to think about how to really get the most out of this process, you could check out a concept called Costa's Levels of Questioning on Google. Look it up. And basically, you have level one, which is really basic, level two, which is helping you synthesize information, and level three, which is getting deeper and trying to make really different connections and things like that. But nonetheless, once you've gone through this process through the unit title, then I would just expand this a little bit more to see, OK, what are the different modules talking about? So we have here fundamental operations concepts, and then we also have competitive advantage. So what does this mean in relationship to the course? And specifically, what does it really mean in relation to management and planning? Think about those things. And lastly, you can expand this even more just to see what the learning objectives are. So you need to be able to explain how operations management helps businesses create competitive advantages. You can describe key strategies or strategy development processes in operation development, operations management, explain the relationship between inputs and outputs to determine a company's productivity. Um, one other thing I would recommend doing, and unfortunately I don't have anything directly on this page, but as you're going into the module, instead of reading through everything, do the module quiz and moreover, do the unit exams. Both of these are going to have three different versions. The unit exam can vary anywhere between, I don't know, 10 and 30 questions, and they'll have three different versions of them. The module quizzes are usually a lot less, so they might be the most 10 questions, but there are some exceptions. Nonetheless, I would take those quizzes and exams as many times as you can until you hit 100% or like a high 90% rate. All right, so step five, and this is optional, really depends on how you started this whole process. But once you do all that work that we just went through, now you can come back and do the pre-assessment again. Now, if you take the pre-assessment closer to the exam date, I took it twice, passed it twice, and decided to finally take the objective assessment. Take your time with this course. Don't rush it. This might be the course you might want to start with because it is just that challenging. If you want to get it out the way, it's really up to you. I'm curious to get some feedback in terms of how this course was for you. Or if someone, if there's any alumni out there that can testify to this being maybe challenging, let me know in the comments. Let's help those who are going through this process not hit their head as hard as maybe we did. And as always, thank you for your support on this channel. I really, really appreciate it. I'm going to keep kicking content like this out so that it helps me, number one, speak to the experience. And also it helps you hopefully have a successful encounter with these different courses. My name is Xavier. This is Tech Xavier. And remember, this is going to be hard at times. So don't be hard on yourself, but instead work hard on yourself. I'll catch you in the next video. Dear me, three to six months. Watch how I make you proud.